What's this? You smell terrible. I know. That's why I'm here to tell you about that. Sorry, that was mean. That was rude of me. I should have come at that with a much gentler tone. I have two sets from Dossier to review. Dossier has been a wonderful partner of mine. We love them. They make amazing scents if you're not familiar with the company. They make. They make perfumes inspired by high-end scents, but without the high-end price, guys. That means that you can get scents that normally would cost like $380 for $29. Just saying, if you stink, which I know you do, consider. So, scents today are Spicy Orchid, okay, and Floriental Brown Sugar. Spicy Orchid is inspired by Tom Ford's Black Orchid. Again, comes with a sample bottle use a sample bottle before you use the full size um, to see if you like it and if you don't like it you can send it back for a full refund or in exchange this has a lot of sandalwood in it which I really like this is technically a man scent this is in the male category and definitely spicy like it says this smells like somebody who drinks bourbon responsibly and wears suits whatever that means to you okay second one Florian's brown sugar is inspired by YSL's Mon Putty. Uh, or Mon Paris, if you're an American. Ooh. This one is very fruity, which makes sense because the top notes are raspberry and pear. So that makes sense. It's fruity, but then it sort of settles out into like a warmer vanilla-y scent. So it might be too fruity for me, but I do like it. And I can see people who like more bright, fun, flirty scents to really like this. So now get your stinky selves out of here. Actually, don't leave, please. Simply the wrong thing to say. If you are interested in getting your own perfume, you can use 10 Bon Bon at checkout at the link below. If you're a first time buyer, you can combine it with a welcome offer, which is 20% for a total of 30% off, which is pretty nice. I think it ends up being like six or $7 off, which means you get your perfume for like 22 bucks. Okay, let's, let's get on to the actual video now. Hey friends, how is it going? It's Halloween. I'm gonna do a little conglomeration of some surgery videos for you. Um, what I found out on clerkships is that it's gonna be impossible for me, implausible, whatever you think, for me to post every week just with like the amount of work that I have going on. Um, we work six days a week, um, all day. And then we come home and we study. So I, I finished surgery. I'm on medicine right now, which is the second busiest one. Um, I have 1,200 practice questions to get through in eight weeks and also a whole book to read. And also I work about 80 hours a week. So it's a lot. So posting a video every week is not feasible. I'm, I really think that it will be interesting for you. And um, just like different from content that I've posted before to see what I've been doing. So I have videos from eight weeks of surgery that I'm gonna try to put together in a way that makes sense in a reasonable amount of time for you because it is 2 p.m. and all I've done today is record a video about Dobby Coffee, which you should try. Um, I posted a reel, not a reel, a YouTube short on it recently, but basically my friends at Javi sent me this coffee um, and it's great. It's a little micro dose. You can make yourself an iced coffee on the go. Um, it does need to be refrigerated, though, which I did not mention in the video. So if you have access to a refrigerator at the hospital, it's a good option for you if you don't want to be spending money on an iced coffee or you didn't bring enough with you. It's like pretty easy to do while you're there. Okay. So, um, quick summary of surgery, uh, and maybe we can throw some videos over here. Basically, I was on four different rotations. I was first on kidney transplant or renal transplant. I was on renal for two weeks. I got to do some kidney um, transplants. I got to take care of transplant patients and kidney donors as well. Good morning, I'm up early. It's 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> Um, which means I've slept like six and a half hours at this point, but I got up to go to the bathroom at like one and now I can't sleep. I've been laying here for an hour and a half. So I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up and I'm going to do some work, maybe study a bit. And if I'm feeling like I want to go back to bed, I can do that until four. It's baby's first day of surgery. Um... Don't come see me. I'm on transplant. I don't want you to need that. 
which is really cool. Some surgery things I got to do while I was on there. I got to close um, the skin, so I put some stitches in, and I also like assisted with placing a like a JP drain, which is just a little like suction bulb um, on the site. So I got to use a little Bovi, which is like an electric um, cauterizer thing. So I got to use the Bovi. Um, I followed some stitches, which just you're like I was the first assist because our resident had to step out for something. So that was fun. Um, and I got to staple and use Derm Bond and all the good things. And so um, learned a lot about the kidneys, but not like a ton because it was surgery, right? And then my next rotation was amazing. I was on trauma for two weeks, which I loved with my whole heart. Hi. Um, wow, today was a big day. It was our first day of trauma and I got to the hospital at about 5.20. We started morning report at six and then immediately had some like trauma activations. And so if you're watching this and don't know what that means and I didn't really until today, just means like Vanderbilt is a level one trauma center, which means like we're getting some pretty big cases flown in here on helicopters and brought in via ambulance. Some bad stuff happens to people. Um, yeah, and then we had our first activation at 6.30 and we had another activation like pretty soon after that and like not everybody has a good outcome. So it was a tough day. It was a tough day. I learned a lot of things. I saw a lot of things that I didn't know were like real um, or just like pearls of wisdom that I had like studied that I've never seen like in practice before. Like for example, when you're giving large volumes of blood, you also want to give a patient calcium because the blood chelates or takes out of solution the calcium you already have, and then you just have like a calcium imbalance and that's not great for your heart. So I saw that happen today, um, which meant that I saw somebody have to get a lot of blood, which probably meant they weren't doing super well. So saw some things. Overall, I, I scrubbed into a surgery. I got to do some new things I've never done before, which was amazing. Um, got to see some people's lives be saved, which was great. And I'm learning a lot about like different modalities of care, which is cool. It's hard, but it's cool. So I'm going to go eat some ice cream. <laughs> um, I'm on days this week and my partner's on nights and then I'm on nights next week and she'll be on days. So we're going to be separated, but um, we work six out of seven days a week. I'll probably take off Saturday or Sunday, depending on like how I'm feeling and then um, probably take off Sunday next week. So I'll be on days for now and then nights next week. So wish me luck. Um, I loved, loved, loved running activations, which just basically means anybody who comes in for a trauma will come to the trauma bay, either by helicopter or ambulance, or maybe they came by themselves or somebody dropped them off. But basically I got to be a trauma junior, which means I stand at the bedside. There's like places for everybody to stand at Vanderbilt. We have them like painted on the floor and it's like this is where the trauma junior stands this is where the trauma senior stands this is where the em resident is um and i got to trauma junior which which means you check the radial pulse when they're on the the like stretcher and then you move them over and you check it again and you're like calling it out and then you get to do the secondary exam which is like um like clavicles are stable bilaterally there's no chest wall crepitus or tenderness chest wall is stable and you're like going through the whole body exam like doing it in front of this big team of people and like you're responsible for doing that one of the coolest things um i saw lots of broken bones and stuff um, which is unfortunate but one of the coolest exam findings that's like actually real that if you're learning in med school and you're like does this really happen is crepitus crepitus is subcutaneous emphysema which just means like air in your like skin and your fat so under your skin there's air where it shouldn't be that can happen if you rupture a lung um, in like a traumatic event so crepitus is a real thing um, and I felt it on exam and I was like I think there's chest wall crepitus and somebody confirmed it and they're like yeah definitely so um, it's cool it's cool being on clerkships because you get to see things that you thought were fake previously like, you're like, I've only ever, ever read about this. Like, I don't know if this is actually real. So, um, love trauma, got to operate, did a lot of belly surgeries. I assisted with a lot of belly surgeries. I got to use 
um, a stapler and like help make an ostomy. Watched a lot of X laps. Um, cared for a lot of people with broken bones. I didn't do any ortho surgeries on trauma. I think that's like a separate ortho trauma and just trauma trauma are different things. Um, but we do care for the same kinds of patients. Um, did a lot, a lot of cool exams and a lot of cool exam findings. I placed my first Foley. I placed my first IV. I placed my first OG tube, um, got to assist with chest tubes. I never did that by myself, but that was something that we sort of could have done. Um, learned what um, arteries and veins looked like on ultrasound. So if I ever needed to do like an ultrasound guided IV, I learned how to do that. Um, and taking care of some really complex patients and people with like interesting stories. So trauma was amazing. I loved it with my whole heart. The hours were super long. We were there from about 6 a.m. Round started at 6. I usually got there at 5.30. Um, so um, like 5.30 to probably like 7 p.m. ish, um, just depending on like when we got done. Usually our second rounds ended at like 6 or 6.30, but sometimes there was an activation and you were called away or like something went a little long. So there were long hours and I tried to go to bed at like 8 because your girl needs sleep. Um, I just need to be rested or I will be a disaster. So um, it was hard to study because we had a lot. We had like 600, 700 or so surgery U world questions to do. And then I was trying to read a little bit of De Virgilia's, which is a textbook for surgery as well. So that was definitely tough as far as studying goes during that. I did a week of days and a week of nights. Um, so I got to see everything, like it was really cool. I got to see a couple of ED thoracotomies and Vanderbilt only does those um, probably like 25 times a year and I saw two. So um, that is when um, somebody needs a lot of support with their heart that you cannot provide with CPR or um, just like shocking on the outside. And so you open the chest wall in the emergency department um, sort of lift it open and your hands are inside of the person be beating their heart for them while they need that support. Um, it's, it's wild. It's wild to see. Um, it's very, it's just shocking to like see it happen. Um, but I loved every minute that I was in trauma. So that was really great. And then I was on emergency general surgery, which is, um, a lot of like, you come into the emergency department and you have appendicitis and it needs to be taken out, or you come in and you have cholecystitis or something wrong with your gallbladder and needs to be taken out or sometimes a little bit like less urgent, um, belly surgeries as long as it's not like um like ruptured if it's like almost ruptured and we need to take it out or like whatever the t is like that's usually um egs or emergency general surgery they also do like hernias and stuff like that so those are kind of the surgeries i saw on there a lot of wound care i did a debridement of um a necrotizing fasciitis called fournier's gangrene um which um is basically like a gangrene that goes in scarpa's fascia. So if you're a medical student, this is like interesting. You'll read about this, it's a real thing. It happens to people. We had a couple patients on service that had Fourniers and they have such a long hospital course. So um, it's crazy. So scarpa's fascia is all the way from like inguinal region and it will like merge with um, your belly. So you can literally have gangrene from like groin to neck and it's just bad, it's bad news. So. Um, those patients are pretty sick, but they were getting better when I was on service. And then the last service I was on was vascular surgery. Um, I did a surprising amount of like assisting on, oh, I didn't mention on emergency general surgery, I got to like drive the camera um, and help close a couple times. Um, so that if it's like a laparoscopic surgery and they put a camera inside of you, I got to direct the camera a little bit, which was nice. Um, it was super fun and um, it's fun to assist and feel useful. I really liked that. And then in vascular surgery, it was a lot of like, we had a lot of things going on. There were people with like aortic aneurysms who needed repairs, people who needed stents placed. Um, we did an amputation revision 
lots of stuff like that. We also did um, one of the cooler surgeries that I saw. It was hard to see during it because I was just helping, but one of the cooler surgeries we did was um, a thoracic outlet syndrome repair or something, decompression, I think is what it's called. So basically there are people in the world whose anatomy um, makes it so that the things that are going through this area of your neck, which is like a ton of nerves and arteries and veins, like all of the nerves that go to your arm um, are right here. So your brachial plexus is there and also your carotid and all of these different things are here. So if this gets squeezed too tight, those nerves don't work as well and you get ridiculous you also will have like disruptions in your blood flow which can cause numbness or tingling or also just like weakness and you can't use this arm as much and that's just unfortunate and so uh, this happens a lot in young people um, or you like notice it when you're young and you want to get it repaired so we did two in one day and basically what you do is you take off a muscle that's here and then you remove the first rib um, yeah, it was wild. Um, so I saw that, I got to, I was the first assist on an amputation, so I um, helped remove some bone and helped close that amputation. So yeah, there was a lot. There was a ton, a ton of stuff. I learned a lot of things and then we took our shelf last week, uh, last week, I think last week, um, because we've just done a week of medicine now and it was really hard. I, if you are studying for the surgery shelf anytime soon, or you are going to at some point in your life, I would really, really recommend doing medicine questions because it, it was a lot more medicine than it was surgery. Um, and I don't know that I was like necessarily prepared for that, but I passed with enough like margin to feel fine about it. Um, but I think that would have helped me. I did all of you world. I read some D Virgilio's, which is all good, but, um, yeah, do some medicine questions. Make sure you take a peek at like the NB me practice tests because they are very different from the U world questions. Um, I looked at them like the day before, which made me kind of nervous. So if you have time to look at those as well, I would recommend doing that. Um, overall, that's sort of a, a summary of my surgery experience. I'm very, very sorry that I haven't posted in a while. Um, I probably won't spend a ton of time editing this because I need to get back to work, but I don't think that I paused or said anything crazy. So just gonna leave it at that. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, if you're new here, subscribe. I'm probably gonna be posting infrequently right now just because things are busy, but I'm happy to accommodate if you have specific questions. I'd love to make a video for you. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. I'll talk to you later.